Hi, this is Kat with Beta Halik, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the symbols bead substitutes and side beads. I'm also going to be showing you some great clasp options for your two hole bead weaving. All right, so down here I have a little project and I'm actually gonna show you how to do this. And this is a great example of what those bead substitutes are. So you can see that I'm using the honeycomb beads here. And then I have these little bead substitutes. So all they really are is a metal plated bead that's gonna substitute one of those colorful beads there. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do this, but let me start and first draw your attention up here. I wanna start by talking about some of the options here. So these are the two hole silky beads here. So I do have some bead substitutes, but when I talk about side beads, this is what I'm talking about. So you can see that it has a little curve on one side there, and then it has one hole that is drilled through the side. So if you kind of see in my little example here, you can drill this onto the side and you can sort of continue to build up your pattern. I'm just placing these, of course, your pattern could be much more complicated than this. But what's really nice is as you're drawing your thread up through there, you're not gonna have any thread bridges on the outside because you have these really nice metal side beads. So that's just a really fun thing to do and they come in a couple of different shapes here, even for these silkies. So let me see if I can kind of nudge that in there so you can get a little visual of what that guy looks like. So we have that little flatter side and then we have that nice rounded side. And then also as you're thinking about finishing off your pieces, here's a great little clasp and this is a little magnetic clasp for the silky beads. So it has that beautiful same shape and you can just kind of continue your design. And this is a really nice way to finish off your bead weaving and keep everything nice and consistent and just beautiful. So those are the silky beads. Now over here, again, we have those honeycomb beads and we have a couple different styles. I love this antique silver one with a little flower on there. And then we have these dimensional ones and they are one-sided. So on the back, they have a little flat side so you could utilize that one as well. And then we have the gem duos. Now these ones are really kind of fun. We have some different little styles here. And this one here, this actually, you can fit a little crystal inside there. So you can actually add a little crystal embellishment to your bead weaving. And again, we see those metal clasps and we have also their own version of a little side bead. It looks very similar to that silky bead. It's a little more shallow and it fits with those gem duos on the side. And then we have some more little side beads here that you can utilize. And let me just kind of bring a couple of gem duos down here. So you can put them like that and just sort of use those on the side just to finish off your bead weaving. And you can add a little extra embellishment on either side. You can also sort of put it into the center there if you want it to, if you want to add some more seed beads. So that's just a little option there when you're working with the gem duos. Moving right along, we have the half tilas and the full tilas, but let me start with the half first. Now these are those bead substitutes and I just love how it's so nice. You can add that little pop of metal and you don't have to use a lot for a big impact. So let's say you're making a bracelet, maybe it's brick stitch with the half tilas or a peyote stitch or something with these guys and you can just sort of add it in and you just add it like any other bead. So there's no extra sort of technique or anything here. But what's great is that we have the little side beads too. Now, when you're looking at the side bead for the tila, the full tila, and this will work for the half as well, um, because of the way that they're drilled, they're basically just cut in half down the center. But these are actually really cool because you can add a little, you know, bridge of seed beads on the outside, or you can add a crystal, or you can add another bead, and let's say you put another one there. So there's just a lot of fun things to do, and I love these bead substitutes here. They have you know, little dots on the top and little squares and also just that nice little metal finish. So a lot of fun to be had with those. All right, now we love using super duos here at Beta Halik. And here's a great class, but I am so thankful that this came out. So I just put a couple of those little super duos in to show you just how sweet it locks in there. And it's so nice. You don't have to add anything to it. You can just keep your design going. And those little ends there are gonna act like little buffers to the other super duo. So let's say you had a wider piece and you just end it with jutting out super duos. You can totally put that in there there. And I just think that's so wonderful. Also, if you wanted to, you could actually end it with a nice little metal bead substitute. And then you have a nice clasp that looks metal all around. So if you didn't wanna put that bead in there, depending on what color you're working with. So that's one of those little super duo bead substitutes. So just something to consider there. All right, we have a little flower here that goes with the Miyuki 11-0 rounds. And I'm just gonna kind of flip it over. Now this kind of looks a little bit more like a button shank. And actually, let me try to pick this up so you can see it a little bit better. So this looks a little bit like a button shank there. 
And what I love about this is that it just kind of sits on top of your bead weaving and just adds a little something. So imagine my fingers are the bead weaving. So that's just gonna sit right on top and flush there and create a nice little, little pop there, a little flower. I have two clasps, two magnetic clasps that work really great with the Miyuki 11 Odelicas. Just because of their cylindrical shape, they're gonna fit really nicely across those little beads there. And then finally, I have some 8 Toho seed beads. And these are gonna work great with these guys here. So again, I have a little bit more of that button shank and you can see on this one that it is larger so it does fit with those 8-0 seed beads as opposed to that 11-0. And I'll just kind of show those side by side there so you can see that one has definitely got a bigger shank. So those are gonna be for our 8-0. And I love these ones because you can add a little flower, you can add some cool metal studs. We have the round ones and the square ones. And then we do have these little bead substitution things here. And these are two hole, but they're gonna work great with those 8-0 beads as well. All right, so let's make a little project with this. So what I wanted to do is I brought out some of the symbols and these are more considered clasps or finishing pieces because they have those nice little loops. They're more bead endings, but I wanted to kind of incorporate those into a nice little sleek design. And what I love about this is you don't need any extra seed beads. You don't need any extra jump rings. You can just make a full earring just with these four ingredients. So I have some of those bead substitutes in gold and then I have my honeycomb beads and then I have my end piece here and of course my earring hook. So the only tools that we're really gonna need is just a pair of scissors. And then I have a pair of chain nose pliers and round nose, or excuse me, two pairs of chain nose pliers to just help me open that loop. But then what I have on my two needles here, we're gonna use a double needle method and this is gonna make it just really, really fast. I'm going to be using the fire line in the smoke color so that you get it to show up here but I just wanna show you in my example, cause you are gonna get little tiny thread bridges and I don't even know if you'll be able to see this. I did use crystal fire line just because of the colors that I chose. So, but I am gonna use smoke here just so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of get this started. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two needles here and I'm gonna pick up one of those beads and I'm just gonna take one needle through one hole and one needle through another hole. And I'm gonna string that down and let that sit in the center of my thread. Now, just go ahead and separate those out. Oops, there we go. And now I'm just gonna pick up one honeycomb on one and one honeycomb on the other and slide that down. And then I'm gonna pick up one hole of a gold honeycomb and one hole of the other. There we go. And I'm just gonna kind of bring that down, keeping it nice and in the center. Oop, flip over. There we go. <laughs> All right, and I'm just gonna repeat that, picking up one hole of one one hole of another, and then again, picking up one, going through one hole and going through the other. And I'm gonna go ahead and string that guy down. There we go. And one last time, picking up one hole of one honeycomb and one hole of another and stringing that down. All right, so now is where we got, get to add our little topper. So the cool thing about these guys is that it's not drilled from bottom to top anymore, even though there are the two holes on the bottom, but what happens is your needle will actually go through one side. So we're gonna crisscross our thread through and go through one side, and then crisscross and go through on the other side. There we go. So now I'm just gonna pull that down, just like so. All right, so now with my right needle, I'm just gonna go all the way back down through all those little beads that I strung, and I'm gonna go all the way down and I'm gonna stop when I'm exiting that bottom blue bead right there. And just go ahead and pull that all the way through. All right, set that aside. And now I'm just gonna repeat that whole thing with the left hand needle going down through that left hand side. There we go, pull that all the way down. All right. So I'm just gonna give it a little tug, make sure everyone's nice and tight. All right, so now I'm gonna create that thread bridge and I'm gonna go back up through that second hole of that bottom blue bead. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up one of my gold honeycombs and I'm gonna go through that next one. Now, because these are double-sided, you wanna make sure that you are picking it up on the right side and you'll be able to tell right away, just like so. And then I'm gonna pick up one of the blue honeycombs and go through the top here. All right. 
And then I'm just gonna turn that around one more time and go through that first blue bead. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside. So you guessed it, we're just gonna repeat on the other side. I'm just gonna to kind of turn this around because I'm right-handed here. So we're gonna, again, just go up through that first hole in that blue bead. There we go. And then I'm gonna pick up one of those honeycomb gold beads and go through that next blue hole. And let's make sure I picked it up right. Yes, I did. <laughs> All right. And the honeycomb beads themselves are not double-sided, so you can pick those up on whichever side because it'll kind of flip around there for you. All right, and then I'm just gonna turn it around and go back down through that first blue bead. All right, so now what I wanna do is I'm just kinda tugging on my thread. I wanna make sure everyone is nice and snug as a bug in a rug. And then I'm just gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go through and around the back because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tie off a little knot there and that's just gonna kinda sit right inside there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this other side here. You just go down, make sure you're catching that thread bridge, create a little loop, and pull that nice and tight. All right, so now I'm just gonna take my snips. You can also use a thread zap for this as well, and just kinda come in there and snip off those, those threads. Set that all aside. All right, and finally, I'm just gonna come in with my chain nose pliers here and I'm just gonna use my fingers. I'm just gonna bend it. You don't need to bend it too far because we're just gonna slip on our earring and close that back up. And there we are, we are all done. Not bad, right? Not bad, a quick little easy project and I love those little added metal elements there. I think it just makes it really fun. It's a great way to just add a little pop, a little shine to your bead weaving. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can get all of these supplies and see even more tutorial videos by heading over to beadaholic.com.